So from Giant Leap's mm -hmm. perspective, we're obviously exposed to, to tenants and, and people and the office is very much about keeping people happy at work because we've got to draw them, them in. So companies certainly have faced challenges in trying to bring their people back. And what we're realizing is that people want more AP grade buildings because people need to have a reason to come back to work. And how we plan and design an office has also become pertinent. It's no longer about giving a person a desk and a chair. They're asking for so much more. No, agreed. Um, we've come across a, a wide range of different tendencies. And if I had to take out sort of uh, one leading trend uh, in terms of a, a return to office, it would be very much that, that the companies have to incentivize their staff to get back. And, and the incentive is in creating great spaces. The pressure now extends onto property owners in terms of getting buildings ready. And in the past, we've found that the property industry is very much just a simple brick and mortar exercise. And then we depend on people like yourselves and tenants to go and improve this sort of basic layer. And I think the, it's, it's good that we're being challenged. It's good that we have to consider both internal and external environments. Um, and this is what we are now focused on. It's a very valid point because the market has been very staid and people have taken it for, for granted. And what we're seeing as a trend and I think we'll start to see it more and more as leaders are starting to speak out very much as Elon Musk did from Tesla the other day, saying that people actually have to come back to, to work. And I think South Africa's had one of the lowest return rates of people coming back to work. Many European countries and the Middle East have been forced back into the, the office. There isn't the flexibility that our people are kind of asking for. And although people have said they're as productive or more productive at home, the more and more studies we start to look at and the initiatives we see that haven't happened from people being at home is becoming a lot more apparent. So we can certainly see people putting more pressure on the employees to come back to work. I think we're finding um, the same thing across our, our portfolio and our tenant base. Um, I think it, you know, it suits a, a particular agenda to work from home. Certainly. And and I think in the same breath, we mustn't forget that the traditional eight to five um, working times needed to be challenged. There, there is no reason for people to drive through peak traffic, especially now with the uh, sort of most recent uh, context of high fuel prices. There's no reason for people to spend an hour in the morning or an hour in the afternoon. So I think the, the COVID setup and the resistance from, from people to return to the office is a good thing in that the status quo needed to be challenged. And hopefully it all lands somewhere in the middle where businesses are a little bit more flexible. And ultimately what businesses want is productivity. And if it means that people are able to, uh, to become more productive in a flexible environment, then so be it. But I think productivity has to be the right kind of productivity. It can't just be sending 100 emails. You've got to still be innovative and creative. And a lot of that actually takes working together. And I know I say it as, as a woman, um, it's obviously been great for women because of childcare and, and that they've been able to stay at home. But I was in a strategy session with some worldwide workspace people last week. And even from the woman there, it came out if you're staying at home, you are being left behind. We're trying to create diversity and inclusion, but you can't do that by just leaving people at home. And one of the biggest questions that came out with diversity is if you don't feel you included at the office, stay at home, but that doesn't fix the problem, it actually just amplifies it. So there, there are gonna be many drawbacks by saying a few of you can stay home, a few of you can go to work. Um, and the other thing that came up, which was really interesting, is this four-day week that some countries and people are trying to push upon themselves. But they were all saying, if it happens, you've actually got to take a pay cut. Even if you're working extra hours every day, you certainly can't produce what you can by working a normal week.